rape, which undoubtedly has become one of the barbaric and heinous crimes, perceptively rampant across the world. In spite of having strict rules and provisions and subsequent severe punishment that even takes life, there is no control on such offense. Anyway, it is just a fact of rape offense, but our major concern is, how the incident of rape began. Well, there might be number of stories behind this, but in this video, I will be sharing a story, which is taken from Hindu mythology, however, whether this story sounds logical or not and what veracity of this story is, does not matter, what does matter that is the meaning and of course relevancy that give us some lesson. So, let's begin the story. First, I introduce all the main characters of this story. First one is, Indra, he is the god of rain and king and leader of heaven. Second one is, Ahalya, she was a woman with divine. She was the creation of Lord Brahma and she had the blessing that she would always have the body and beauty of 16-year-old girl. Third one is, Maharshi Gautama, he was a great sage of his era. Ahalya was married to Maharshi Gautama. Likewise, the story of rape revolves around these three major characters. So, story begins with the creation of Ahalya. Interesting fact of this creation is, Ahilya was not born out of a woman, but rather created by Lord Brahma. This is the reason that is more often she is described as an Ayunij Sambhava, which means not born out of a woman. As mentioned in the Balkanda of the Ramayana, 5th to 4th century BCE, that Brahma molds her with great effort out of pure creative energy. Further, the Brahma Purana and the Vishnu Dharmutra Purana also record her creation by Brahma. According to the Mahari dance tradition, Brahma created Ahalya out of water as the most beautiful woman in order to break the pride of Urvashi, the foremost Apsara. However, in some other sources, there are some different stories regarding the creation of Ahilya, but I won't be focusing on that much here, as that is not much important. Brahma's this creation, Ahilya, right from her childhood, she was not only beautiful, but also very intelligent. As she grew up, her beauty was being discussed among all the gods and other sage people. However among all, the most lucky one was Maharshi Gautama. After marrying Gautama, Ahilya settled into his ashram, also known as Hermitage, which later became the site of her epic curse. However, when Ahilya's marriage was being discussed, God Indra was also a potential candidate. Not only this, he already became an enamor and was deeply mad in her love. Because of his such madness, in spite of the fact that Ahilya got married to sage Gautama, still Indra continued stalking her. Over period in time, Indra became so obsessive that he started making some illegal plan. He observed all the activities of Maharshi Gautama and in order to execute his illegal plan, he also involved the moon. In fact, every day for ritual bath and all other such activities, Gautama used to wake up early morning and go to nearby river and usually returned back in two hours. So, Indra made the conspiracy theory to use this time. Further, in order to make his plan perfect, he convinced Moon to take the form bird rooster. Another fact was, Gautama used to wake up early morning on the croak of rooster. This is the reason that Indra involved Moon and requested him to take the form of a rooster and start croaking at midnight only. As per Indra's instruction, Moon took the form of a rooster and started croaking at midnight. Consequently, Gautama woke up and went for his ritual bath and all other such activities. In the meantime, Indra entered in his ashram under devious disguise face of Gautama and deceived Ahilya to have sexual relationship with him. However, in the meantime, Gautama returned back and witnessed all the illicit work that was being committed there. Maharshi became furious and cursed Ahilya to become a stone statue and also cursed Indra to become an eunuch with ugly face. However, at different sources, there are different interpretations, 
as some sources say that Ahilya identified Indra however got deceived by him and consented for the sexual intercourse and some say, she could not identify and gave her consent under impression that he is her husband, as Indra disguised his face and took the face of Gautama. Anyway, that is not much important. Well, the important is, after this incident everyone was shocked, anxious and abusing Indra. Amidst all, Lord Shiva was much worried with something else in mind, and when her wife Goddess Parvati asked the reason of that, Lord Shiva replied that whatever happened that is of course a great stigma that cannot be cleaned anyway. But I am much worried because from now onwards such incident of rape is started and will spread across the world among humankind. Besides, if I talk about the punishment, then in this case, victim, she was Ahilya, and perpetrator who was Indra, both of them were punished in different forms, which were pretty unique and severe in nature even at that point in time. So, if I compare this incident with today's rape incident then in context of giving punishment, we have better system in the sense that our legal system does not punish rape victims rather ensures sympathy and other rehabilitation facilities. On the other hand, the perpetrators are being punished under the law. However, if I compare it on the account of execution of punishment then, that period was pretty efficient, but today, we have very lengthy and complicated procedure that essentially need to be followed before finally punishing a rape perpetrator. And, it might be one of the reasons that encourage some morally weak people to commit such offense. Of course, there are some other reasons, but this is one of the important reasons. So, to conclude the story, I would like to say that as per the Hindu mythology, this is how the incident of rape evolved.